Hey everyone, I sat down with Dr. Justin Rabinowitz, who is a chiropractor local to me in my gym. He actually had his chiropractic office inside my gym for many years, and he and I still remain friends. And he's now moved on to doing kind of what I do, runs a mastermind for rehab chiropractors. But he and I sat down and we talked a lot about the relationship between gyms and medical professionals, rehab chiropractor, physical therapy, put those all in the same camp. Uh, and he gave some really great advice on how to create mutually beneficial relationships between the, the two. So he and I talk shop back and forth. So if you're looking to get more clients from local physical therapists, chiropractors, this is a great episode to check out. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Fitness Business University podcast. I have been doing most episodes by myself for a very little time. And for the first time this year, I'm starting to have some guests. I've had some, some really big name people. I had on Ari Weinswig. I had on Mike Boyle. I had on, who else did I have on? A bunch of real famous people in the fitness field. And super excited to have on my good friend, Justin Rabinowitz. Justin not only is a friend of mine, but he had his business inside my gym for many years. We had a great, long-lasting relationship for a long time and still do today. We meet every Wednesday and run hills together and talk business. And you not only have a successful chiropractic business, chiropractic cryo rehab business, but now you are doing what I'm doing, which is you run a mastermind group for rehab chiros, chiropractors. And guys, Justin that absolutely has exploded in the last, doing this only two years now, I think, and the amount of people that you're helping right now is absolutely incredible. So we'll get into the, the, the lightning speed of your growth in that business. But really, the first question I, I have for you is, as a chiropractor, as a rehab chiropractor or a medical professional, there are probably a lot of times where you are looking to work with gyms and vice versa. And the question I have for you that I think people are looking to hear from home is you as a medical professional, what do you need to see in a gym that makes you say, that is a place that I want to refer my clients to? It's a great question. And as we were previously recording and having the opposite conversation, I thought about what I would say if the opposite was true. And I will tell you one of the number one objections or questions I get from my members, from my rehab chiros, when people ask this is, how do I develop a relationship with a gym that I don't really believe in? Mm. Because now it's, I want to do business with them, but I don't know if I want to send my clients. And so what does that mean? You have to recognize from our perspective as medical providers, we're dealing with people from, and this will actually make your gym owners really happy because we're going to actually talk tech, technical stuff here. We're referring to people that are injured, getting away, off an injury, but are like fragile, so to speak, and not that type of fragile, but they could, if they go back in the wrong setting and are pushed incorrectly, we could undo all the, the stuff that we've had. And so as a medical provider and getting people back into the fitness side, which is rehab tires is so important, we want to know that our people are going to be taken care of not only emotionally, but from a technical standpoint that in our world, when we refer them to you, that you're not going to go do anything stupid. And so we want to be able to sit down and understand what is your process. One thing, just are you able to uh, make modifications? Because the problem that we have with gym owners oftentimes is it's zero to a hundred. And so let's just say Vince, that you came to us and you had a disc herniation. We did good. We got you out of pain, and, but I'm so scared to send you back to a gym because I know that every Monday they back squat. It's like Vince cannot handle back squats. And again, it's fine. Everybody back squats for everybody. That, and, but that's the type of thing. The reality is all we want to do is Vince, you need to be in the gym yesterday, but I have to know that if we can't do X, that it's okay, that we can modify it and get you back in. And so from a mindset for me, as someone that coaches rehab chiros is understanding and, and having that the gym is good enough to be able to monitor there. The second thing that I would say is on a more relationship level is that there is some version of communication with the people that we're going to be working with. As a rehab Cairo, we're in our world, we're niched in that people come to us for the experience and the service, which is very much like the gym owners that you coach. 
But if we can't refer someone and speak to the coach who's doing the programming or speak to the owner who is involved with that and have a, a constant communication with them, whether text, email, it's going to be very hard for us to keep track of our client. And obviously that relationship goes both ways. But from our perspective, like we don't want to, just like you guys don't want to ruin your reputation by getting a result with someone. Someone just spent three, four grand with us to get out of pain and fix their problem. And then all of that, and we send them back and they're back to where they started. And so that's the number one thing that for us as medical providers, we believe in the fitness side so much. Some people would argue too much where like we look at ourselves as trainers, but the downside of that is we can often do the work with people and, and they'll be injured. And honestly, so I'll tell you this, a lot of people in my industry, they step to the other side because they don't see anyone else doing it in a way that they would want. Most of my clients shouldn't be in the fitness side. It's a distraction, but they do it because they look around them and no gym is treating their clients or patients the way they should. So I think that's the primary. That's it's so funny to say that because we have fallen into that trap. Like when we were getting into the FMS stuff, like years ago, we were doing the screens and all the correctives and stuff like that. At one point we we're like training our people and for 30 minutes, they're doing banded hip lifts and, and looked around. What are we doing here? Like we're, we're playing physical therapy. What happened to like getting our clients strong? And so that's why I think like relationships with people like you are so important. Like our job as gymers is to get people fit, healthy, strong, build their endurance, all that stuff. Your job is to get them out of pain, right? And so I think these synergistic relationships are so important. We were just talking before about referrals. And I know a lot of the, the gripe between a lot of my guys as gym owners that have relationships with certain guys. There's, yeah, I went and I built a relationship with the doc, but he never sends me anybody. What can a gym owner do to increase the volume of referrals that they are getting from a medical professional like yourself? Going back to what we said in the opposite way is, Either can you become a client of them to really understand what they're doing? I think that's such an important po point because on both ends, if there's an ignorance on what the other person is providing, I think that's where we often get stuck. As a medical professional, again, we want to build relationships with people that are going to be synergistic with the client. And I think even more as a practitioner, our business is small. Like it's, we might make more per customer and all of that. In a busy day for us, we interact with, if we're spending an hour or 30 minutes, eight, 10, 12 people, that's it. Busy week for us is 30, 35 people in a week if they're spending an hour. Where So like each relationship is so delicate. And so we want to have such a trusting relationship that I know that if I'm sending someone to Vincent's gym, that I know that if he can't help them, I trust that he's going to tell us. If there's an issue, he's going to let us know. And so how does that happen? What any relationship in life is time, right? Is time and like touch points. And so if that's something that you want to be able to do and develop a relationship with medical providers, you have to continually show up. You have to be on offense. You have to be the first to do it. We all get busy. You get busy in your gym. We get busy with patients. It's easier just not to, to develop the relationships with providers. But at the end of the day, the closer you can come to developing a true like friendship, once you develop that, then you can do whatever you want. And something we found on our end, on my practice, Strive to Move, is if we want to do marketing at, with a gym, at this point, we have such relationships where we're just like friends. So it's just like, hey, can we come and set something up? It's, yeah, sure, no problem, because they trust us. And so on both sides of it, it, it's a, it, if it feels transactional, it's probably not going to work. But when you have friends, hey, yeah, my buddy, he's an acupuncturist, or it's okay, now we're in. Now we have that. So. You have to invest in the relationship. The problem is it takes time. And the real problem is people often don't see that the benefit of it or don't think they have the time. So you have to dedicate yourself to doing that. I want to get a little tactical here with you. And I wanted to, and I know we've done some similar stuff like this together, but I want you to, I'm speaking to the gym owner and that gym owner is looking to create opportunities like joint ventures, right? That's something we teach a ton or joint ventures. What are the things that you've seen work well, not only with yourself, but also you have 125 chiropractors that you work with, right? In terms of very specifically partnerships with gyms, so medical professionals with gyms, what have you seen these joint venture relationships? Have you seen them? Give us some tactical examples. We did this here and I'm, the only regret I have is that COVID happened. 
because right before COVID, when we were at GFP, we did one, which was awesome. And because it provided value to everyone. And what we did, I don't even remember, but we set up a, a table on know. a Saturday morning. At, you, in the lobby. In the lobby, okay. We also, we had a relationship with the local running store. And one of the things the local running store did this. was that they basically bring inventory and they allow members to try use shoes during the workout. And then if they like them, they can buy them or they don't have to. And then I think we also brought in like a local like smoothie company. It was like, it was like a threesome. Exactly. <laughs> but everyone wins. Yeah. Like we win because we're helping to create value for you well, yeah. in, that, in that the clients win because this is really cool. We can like potentially they brought the shoes to us and we probably need them anyway. The running store won because they're selling shoes and the smoothie company and it's, huh, this is good. So all of a sudden it's like literally everyone in that relationship wins. Now, the thing that we did in that thing was we did all the heavy lifting. And so at the end of the day, if you have those relationships and you can bring that level of value to people, I think it's really important. What we've recently done with other gyms is we don't, we sometimes go there and say, Hey, can we just, when we just have coffee for your members? allows us to just be there and we offer value and then we're, we're not doing any hard sales. It's just, Hey, and if you like, and if you like it or you need help, we're here, maybe just follow us on Instagram. It's just touch points. It's funny. Cause I, so I think like it's what you're saying is you, in this specific example, you drove the idea, you drove the marketing side of it. And I think we're talking to gym owners today, right? And a lot of times they might not be a Justin Rabinowitz chiropractic school. Right. They might not be skilled in direct response marketing like most of your guys are. So the gym is going to be the one that's going to have to do the driving of this and be able to drive everything. Even if if we reversed that situation or, or redid it and I was Gabriel Fitness and I wanted to do that, if I have a local partner like my practice, that would be helpful. But if I wanted to get more clients as a gym owner, bringing in the running store and bringing in the smoothie shop who has a large list of people. Now, all of a sudden it's, Hey, we're running this, this, do you want to come into our facility to do that? And can we send an email out to your list as well? Because if you're a running shop, you have to have a list of thousands of people. And so now all of a sudden, if I'm a gym and I want to attract it, yes, it's great for my current clients, but that'll give me an opportunity to go and say, listen, you can sell your shoes. Can we send an email to say we're having a free workout as well or something like that? That's a great way to use someone else's list in order to bring them in. So that would be how I would, if I was a gym owner, that's how I would uh, build value for the running store, so to speak. And then also try to get in with them on their list so that they can attract their customers. Yeah. And I also know we've done joint events together and seminars and things like that. And I've done many of them. And I think that's a good one too, because as a gym owner, a lot of times, if they're a good medical professional, they're well known in the community, right? they're respected, they're a doctor. And so a gym owner would be very, it would be a very beneficial thing to be on the same poster. I always say poster because like when I first started, uh, and I told the story on your podcast, but when I first started, I was doing seminars with an orthopedic surgeon. And just my face on the same poster as that doctor was massive credibility and massive authority for me. And so you got to look at this as if you decide to partner with a really well-known chiropractor in your area, and hopefully you have a Rabinowitz chiropractor in your area that you can connect with, that person's going to be well-known in the community and well-respected. And you doing, a, as a gym owner, you doing a joint workshop or something like that with them can be very valuable. What, I want to give, you, about, can I give yeah, you a couple more? Yeah, we've been doing, and I think it's, if I'm a gym, it's actually, what we're doing as a chiropractic practice is significantly harder. If I were a gym owner, one of the things that I would be spending a ton of time on obsessing over is, could be local like farmer's markets or something where I can go and set up a table where there's walking traffic. And I'll tell you the story about this. So every Saturday, my wife, we have a farmer's market right across from our house. And I go to this farmer's market and it's great. They have all the vendors, the cheese and the whatever. And every time I walk through, all I can think about is if I had the cheese stand, how would I get more people over to my booth to have to start conversation? And the only thing I can think of is reciprocity. And so rather than these people having free samples, but sitting behind their tent, let me go out into the area and say, Hey, would you like a free sample? And out of every five you ask, maybe one to two say yes, but it's more than zero because you have to wait for them to come over. Once someone takes something from you, what we found is all of a sudden they're more likely to 
to have a conversation. And so here's how it works for a gym owner. We did a race recently as a chiropractic practice, and we had a table behind the, behind the booth. We want people to be at stretch by us so that we can have the conversation and develop that relationship. What did Justin do? He grabbed the box of whatever we bought from Costco, water and protein bars and all that. I just walked around and asked people if they would like this. And somebody would say no, they might say no, but guess what? Out of every five people, two or three were like, yeah, sure, thanks. And when they said thank you, the thing that I would say is, hey, by the way, if you'd be so inclined, here's a QR code, could you follow us on Instagram? Now, all of a sudden, because of the way Instagram works, we're obsessed over as you sell by chat. Every new follow gets a contact. And so if you go to the local farmer's market every Saturday and you have your gym table set up or whatever, and you literally just hand out whatever, just to get in conversations with people. And when someone takes something, reciprocity, would you mind giving us a follow? All of a sudden, I got 20, 25 local brand new leads. Now, the thing, the change for me in 2024 has been treating every new follower as a lead. Yeah. All I want to do is get that. And it's a QR code. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. If I could do that, rinse and repeat, to me, that's like building your email list in 2024. So let me, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Can you talk about this sell by chat? Yes. Right. And obviously do it from your point of view, but it's very similar, it's right? It's almost the exact same thing. Right. So for a local business, I know there's one little tweak that you do differently from a local business versus that. So talk about, so, so let me set the stage and I've taught this as well, not on the podcast though. Basically what we're talking about is when you get an Instagram follower, that is an opportunity to send them a direct message saying, whatever you're about to say, whatever you're about to tell us, we learned it from the same person, right? And that is you treat that like a lead that would opt in for a lead magnet or anything like that. What's the process that they go through to do that? So here's the tweak, because you're a local business, you own a gym, the tweak versus your and I business where we can go with anyone. The tweak is the first message, the first reach out is, hey, thanks for the follow. And we're located in Berkeley Heights. Where are you located? Boom, first one, if they say, hey, you're welcome. I'm in Long Beach, California. Great. Thanks so much for following our content. Keep following along. Yeah. Not going not to be a customer. They're not low. Yeah. If they say, oh, I'm in Chatham. Oh, beautiful. Are you currently a member of a gym? Or have you looked to work? Something like now I'm in conversation, right? And now all of a sudden I'm starting it. But the pre-qualification for the local business is just, hey, we're located here. We're located there. That's what we do in our practice. And then we get into any sort of sales script. People say, how do I engage in the conversation, it would be the same thing. We just say we follow our sales principles. So whatever you're teaching your gym owners, it's we pre-qualify, they're within a whatever mile radius is kosher, so to speak. Then we just get in the conversation. Are you, what's the big goal? Are you looking to lose weight? What did you come to my page for? Something along those lines. And you just want to get into that conversation. But the difference between a local business and like an online business is just, hey, we're located in Berkeley Heights. Where are you? And if they say, and if they're in a radius that's sufficient, you get in a conversation. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. It's such a great strategy. And I know a lot of our guys are using it and a lot of your guys are using it. So that is, that is awesome. Like that one nugget alone, if they can start, if you just start, and here's the thing, most gyms probably have a ton of Instagram followers right now. You don't even have to worry about getting new ones right now. Just follow up, up with the people that it, it's like a whole new blanket of leads for your business. Just imagine the farmer's market strategy. Cause for years I would say like, why would anyone, it doesn't seem like it's valuable for our types of businesses. I couldn't figure out how to make it work. But then this is, you think about, so we're in, in Martinsville, we go to the Bedminster Farmer's Market. Who's going to the Farmer's Market? It's for the most part, people that are local, people that typically like value usually a little bit more than the average supermarket. They like the experience, they have a family and that's your perfect avatar usually. And so that, if you can just get the follow, tw 20 of those every Saturday, for in, in New Jersey for 16 weeks, it's really hard to screw that up just on a volume game. Where else are you going to find that? You're not nowhere else. I think it's if, you, if people listening aren't doing that or haven't done that or can't figure out how to translate that, I think you're leaving money on the table. For your practice locally, who does that in your staff? Is that you that does it? Is it one of your team members? I don't do it. We have Kaylee and Ashton. They are our, basically our managing members of our practice. Kaylee is essentially accountable for marketing. What she does now, and she's done it brilliantly, is because she was getting real tired of doing, we call them opens. So we have, right now, we have a high school intern. 
every new follower she gets at, and during the school year it was three o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Charlotte goes into Instagram and any new follower she sends, Hey Vince, we're located in Bridgewater. Where are you? And if they say we're in Bridgewater, then somebody else takes it on, but it could be your admin, whoever, but that's a 16 year that's going in. It's just sending the first message. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's talk about having your chiropractic practice inside of a gym. I know for me, it's been invaluable to have you inside of our business, right? Where we could refer to you directly. What are the benefits to the gym owner that's possibly considering bringing in a medical professional, a rehab chiro, a PT into their location to take over a certain, they got to give up something, right? So we gave up a corner of our facility to, to, to be able to have medical professionals in here. What are the benefits of having them inside to a gym? If I'm a gym owner, the one benefit, typically if you're running a small group training gym, you have clients that they value their assets, time and money. They're usually smart people and they're professionals. And as you and I know, as you go forward with kids and family and business, the convenience, oftentimes we're willing to pay for convenience. And so if I'm a gym owner, if I'm a client of a gym and at nine o'clock, I can go have my training session at 10 o'clock. I can do my PT or rehab Cairo. All of a sudden, I don't have to drive to the gym and then leave and go to PT and go. All of a sudden, half my day is gone. And as you and I both know, as we get older, time becomes a huge factor in our life. So if you have competent providers all under one roof, it's a dream on both sides, Cairo's and gym owners that we've always talked about. How can we get everything in one facility? Usually it doesn't work out. But as a gym owner, again, if that's a valuable uh, appeal for people where they can go to one place and have that. The other benefit is it's like a game of telephone where what we often see from our clients, the thing that they appreciate about us is if we have Sally come in and she has neck pain, that we're going to treat her for neck pain. And then we will be the one to go and contact the gym and say, hey, Sally's got neck pain. Here's what I want you to avoid. Here's what you do. And, and then I can tell Sally, just show up. They know what they're going to do. Um, from your perspective, it's a value add because now all of a sudden, like you're providing a higher level of service for your clients because it's like Sally is being treated for neck pain. We know exactly what the treatment looks like. We know exactly what the exercise we should avoid. Now all of a sudden, Sally doesn't have to leave her PT appointment and say, I got to go remember to tell Vince that I can't do shoulder press and this, and I, I'm not going to, should I write it down? Should I tell? And it becomes stressful. And we often find if you ask, our clients and people have volunteered this information. It's just so nice that I don't have to remember and I feel taken care of. And so that it really is the pie in the sky of what we all want. It often doesn't, it's not executed in that way. On the other end, the reason why for your gym owners, why it's often valuable for people like us is because typically as a provider, especially when I'm getting going, I don't need this big office space. And oftentimes the value as a medical provider is that I can get in usually cheaper because I just need a room and I don't need to sign like a five-year lease. And so from the other side of it, it's also valuable because your gym owners are, are looking for someone. Oftentimes you can help give someone sort of a start and it can be a mutually beneficial relationship that you can provide somebody. So like understanding it from the other side. I think the other thing is too, there's this, comfort like i know when we sign up a new client when we tell them that we have a medical professional on staff it like ups the ante of the value that not only are there's health and fitness because people that you know most of our gyms that that follow us they're doing 40 to 60 people are banged up they got injuries and stuff like that they know it's coming right but then it's like this you're not a one-stop shop right you just have that perception of that one stop shop me oh i can get my fitness stuff here if i happen to nick myself up i can go right over there and go and get treatment and then come right back into it and go from there so that's awesome yeah so last thing is this is more for my curiosity you obviously ran a chiropractic business for a long time i don't know if you ever wanted to open up a mastermind business for rehab chiropractors i don't know when that kind of idea came into your mind, but you have exploded, right? You have got grown faster. You've done it 10 times faster than I did it, but you have grown a massive coaching and consulting company in the rehab Cairo field in a very short amount of time. 
what do you attest to that rapid rise of success? One thing just in my world, it's, it fell into a blue ocean where the problem that my clients face, and I think it's valuable for gym owners to understand to dive like deep into what their actual, what the customer's real problem is, is a lot of people that become chiropractors very quickly become disenfranchised for a lot of reasons. But one of them is many of the chiropractors in my group are, come from an exercise science, personal training background, and that's who they are as people. And they go to chiropractic school very often because they say, I love this, but I also want to be able to treat people in pain. When they graduate, oftentimes they see themselves identity-wise more as coach and a trainer that can do the medical side of it. The problem that they face is that there is nobody that is able to, had been able to figure out how they could actually make a business out of it. See, the challenge from our perspective is we mentioned before, like we are not in my world just cracking backs. We're doing exercise, we're doing rehab, we're getting people back into the gym. That requires a different level of skill, typically more time, and we have to charge more money for it. What's the problem with that is if you're going to charge more money for something, you have to learn how to market it differently, you have to learn how to sell it and have a sales process. And there is nobody in my space that was doing that. And so all of a sudden I come along and say like, all right, guys, you can actually practice this way. What's the best for your clients? And how about this? What a world where you can actually make money doing it. You're just going to have to learn the skills required. And so that was a blue ocean that I fell into. I think to make it relevant for your audience, the two things, when I was here starting when like 2017, you saw the team that I brought in. It was me, it was Ashton, it was Hannah, and it was Lauren. They're still with me today. And we've added pieces to it. And so the value of having people that start with you, we all start, none of us knew shit, we knew nothing. But over time, we all learned and grew. And I was able to continue to grow myself and the business enough to provide opportunities. And so it's what uh, Dan Martello always says, like your business, your vision has to be big enough to keep people, to have the people stay inside of it. I think it's such a good idea because what happens oftentimes in the fitness business or in my business is you bring on a new trainer or a new doctor and they love it and they're being mentored and they start to grow themselves and they want to grow their income and they grow themselves, grow their income. And one day they wake up and say, I don't need this person anymore. This is not a leader. I'm actually ahead of him. And then I go and leave. And so for me as a leader in the business, it's just who I am. I'm growing and learning all the time, but I am trying to elevate myself and create other opportunities so that they can continually grow in them. And so having that team, which you did that for years and years, when I was here, you had some of the same trainers for, it was not normal, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years of people that it grew in, and with your business over time. And so I think I've been able to grow it through the blue ocean. There was a, there was no one in the space speaking to the people I'm speaking to. And then I had people on my team that they knew what we were doing. They've been with us. They've seen us grow and they continually took more opportunity. And so like any sports team, it's like we have a, a, a rock solid group of players and then we've been able to add more pieces to that as we've grown. So I think the lesson for the gym owners that are out there is if you have the right people, they're going to be attracted to people that are continually growing. And we've seen it, people in our own, in your industry too, in niche of they grow the one gym and then maybe their growth is another gym or it's a coach or whatever it is. And you're going to be able to keep good people with that because people want to be a part of that. And I think for your audience, just to just talk directly to them for a second, no, none of us want to do this alone. None of us want to do this alone. We end up doing it alone oftentimes because we have no other option. And so the challenge I have for your audience as gym owners is to say, who am I currently and who do I need to become along the way? so that the good people I have, I don't need to be afraid of them leaving. I need to be afraid of me not providing enough opportunity. That's the I always say that nobody wants to be on a ship that's parked at the dock. Like they want to be on a ship that's going somewhere, that's going somewhere exciting. And I always say it's up to us. That is the one job that we've got is that we have to decide where we're going, what the vision is, and we have to direct the ship to be able to get there. So awesome answer. Let me, the, I often think about it. They say, oh, once you own a business, like we, we can never work for anyone else. It's like, that's actually not true. People in my life, like people like Paul, our mentor, or people like Dan, I would be so excited to be able to go spend two years with them. Why? Because they're learning and growing and they're at a level that I aspire to. 
it's not that I couldn't work for anyone. It's that most of the people around here I wouldn't want to work for because they're not playing at the level that I want to aspire to play at. That's the difference. And, and I think one of the things that we both did is that you were working with Paul Goff as a chiropractor right, and getting education from him. And then I hired Paul to teach me how to grow an information marketing business mastermind. And I think one of the most underutilized success strategies is find someone that's doing something great that you want to aspire to do and then hire them and allow them to tell you, like, that's why we're employed, right? Because we have both have hundreds of gym owners and chiropractors looking to us to say, how do I do this better? Teach me because you've done it before. And I think that's a hugely underutilized success component of just find someone that already has done what you want to do, hire them to teach you how to do it. It's really simple. Yeah. And, and just the, the closing thought, we have the same mindset as practitioners that your audience often has. And what I often find fascinating is there are people listening to this podcast that have gone to every FRC, FMS, great stuff that you and I have both attended. And they are lifelong learners, air quotes, except when it comes to the thing that they don't like, which is business. Yeah. And the world will show you where you're not free. People that are listening to this, that are afraid to invest in themselves, growing themselves as a leader as a business person as a marker as a salesperson that's most likely the going at some point guys we got to put the training books on the shelf and give those to your staff and then pick up business books and start doing that justin how can they follow you i think your stuff on instagram is phenomenal i always watch your videos i always read your posts you're just someone that's doing it on a very high level how can they follow you on instagram and is there any other things that you want to mention where they can uh, the first thing yeah at justin rabinowitz we can j-u-s-t-i-n-r-a-b-i-n-o-w-i-t-z that's my personal page where we post all that if you want to see how my practice does it at strive the number two move uh, i'll give my team kaylee and ashen a shout out because i would say from a creative standpoint they're doing it better than i am that is a good point you do a really good job on your and again this is very and i know i've had some of your staff members help us out at gf on some of our organic instagram content so i definitely would follow strive to move com and to the gym owners out there this is my the call to you if you have a chiropractor that you're in touch with they refer them to justin because if they get better at business they're going to be a better referral source for you it's just going to be a great synergistic relationship so send any car gym owners send any chiropractors that you know justin's way and let them let him school them up on the business side yeah last thing if they if you refer your friends that are chiropractors and they follow at justin rubino it's if nothing else you can watch me sell by chat because i'm gonna try to get them in my group there you go <laughs> awesome. Very good. Justin, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. All right, later.